Hello again, everyone. Uh, this is me, Asan Hilmi, success partner with OBA Energy. And I will be your moderator in today's webinar uh, titled Well Integrity Management System. Uh, this is a free uh, series of webinars that OBA Energy provides. Uh, from time to another, you can find all these webinars on our, our YouTube channel. Uh, today's webinar is number 73. Uh, before we start, we, I have a typical presentation to, uh, to present our upcoming services plan with OBA Energy. Uh, you will see in your screen now a uh, dashboard that represents uh, OBA Energy in numbers in terms of uh, uh, the team, uh, the number of inspectors that we have in our family, how many webinars that we have already conducted, uh, our our presence worldwide uh, that is presented in the map that is in the right uh, right down section of my screen. Uh, also, you can find that we are uh, well presented on the social media, especially on LinkedIn. So you can follow up on these uh, channels to get new updates about OB Energy. Uh, we have uh, nowadays uh, the ninth wave of courses that we provide live courses. Uh, the remaining two courses in this uh, series of courses are uh, two interesting courses. The, the first one is Applied Reservoir Geomechanics, which is going to be conducted uh, from the 16th to the 21st of, uh, of September. And the last course in this uh, series of, of courses is uh, stuck by prevention. This is a uh, drilling technology related uh, training program that will be conducted uh, during October from the 1st of October to uh, the 1st of October. Uh, sorry, it will start by the, the, the 30th of, uh, of September and end by the 1st of October. As you can see uh, in the black color, we have break days, uh, which is usually Tuesday. Uh, so on these two days, we usually conduct uh, three webinars. Uh, today is an exception for this. Uh, you can enjoy your early bird on these uh, courses. You can see that we have a discount from $20 to uh, 175 So this is a good discount. Also, if you'd like to uh, get a a package discount on, on all of these courses, you can get also an interesting discount. Uh, in front of you is the QR code if you'd like to register in, in, in any of these courses. So you can scan this code uh, if you would like to uh, attend any of these courses. Also, I will be sending the, the link for registration form in the chat area. I think that the link is now in the chat box. You can see it now. Uh, we also have conducted a very interesting series of live courses that are now available as a recording. Uh, you can see that we have uh, like five bundles, different bundles in different courses, reservoir engineering, uh, production technology, open and case, the whole laying bundle, uh, rig and the regular operations, uh, in, in addition to miscellaneous bundles that includes interesting courses like petroleum economics, uh, introduction to data analytics, and uh, high software. So I, I, I really encourage you all to register in these courses. And we, we already have a very interesting discount on these uh, bundles. If you, if you purchase more than one course, you will start to get your discount. Uh, this is the same thing, but it's, it's uh, in, in uh, uh, more graphics. You can find all these recording courses on our website that I really encourage you to visit. Uh, here is also a QR code for our big sale on these uh, recorded courses. Uh, you can also uh, register through the link that I have sent earlier on the chat uh, area. Uh, I, I see someone of you commenting that these courses is too expensive. Uh, I believe if you if you review the, our offers, you will get a very interesting discount. We also conduct an uh, interesting program, which is the mentorship program. This is a one-to-one -one program you design on your, uh, on your own uh, reference. You choose your instructor and set up the time for your sessions. 
very interesting uh, things and successful uh, stories in this mentorship program. We have already conducted more than 30 mentorship programs. Uh, this is our website. You can go type obacourses.com and you will uh, see all our of our services on this uh, website. Uh, so I really encourage you to visit the, the website. This is more, more screenshots from the website uh, and our lovely galleries that shows some of our lovely pictures with uh, different group of students that visited Egypt for getting an internship program with us. Uh, this is also a very interesting program for students coming here in Egypt, getting some training programs, uh, uh, as well as getting some fun and the site uh, visit location for, for locations like uh, geological uh, locations here in Egypt and some uh, interesting visits to, to some of the service companies here in Egypt, like the giant uh, Schlumberger and uh, Baker Hughes. Uh, you can become one of our ambassadors just by joining us in any of these uh, interesting programs that we provide, being an internship, live course, recorded course, internship program, uh, mentorship program. All these uh, uh, validate you for our ambassadors' uh, family. Uh, I have some few rules for you uh, before uh, heading to our webinar today. Sorry, I have muted your microphone so that you can clear, uh, get clear message from our instructor. Uh, if you have any question during the webinar or, or after the webinar, please keep your questions and uh, you can start uh, typing it in the chat area during the Q&A part that will be in the, by the end of the webinar. I will read it to, uh, to, you, to our instructor today, Engineer Mustafa, and he uh, would like, welcome to answer your question. Uh, if you are joining using a name like iPhone, Galaxy, or something like this, I really encourage you to go rename yourself as we will be sending uh, certificates of attendance for this uh, cert 73 webinar. Uh, will be sent in one week, within one week from today. Uh, our, our guest speaker for today is Engineer Mustafa Adil. Uh, a brief introduction about, uh, about Engineer Mustafa. Uh, he is an energy technology analyst and the senior oil integrity engineer, a petroleum engineering graduate with uh, more than 10 years of experience developing natural gas and energy technology insights to investigate long term energy development. Uh, he led, developed, and uh, contributed to engineering projects that increased uh, operational efficiency through procedural uh, designs and systematic uh, restricting uh, of workflow. He worked in international energy uh, diplomacy and oil and gas petroleum engineering and oil integrity in an exhibition production company. He holds two master degrees in petroleum engineering from the University of Aberdeen and innovation management uh, jointly between Cairo University and the Cambridge University. Uh, Engineer Mustafa, over to you to start your webinar. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Engineer Mustafa, can you hear me? Uh, hello, Engineer Mustafa. I, I really co-hosted you. You can uh, unmute your mic now. Ah, yes. Finally. Uh, sorry, I was uh, I was muted. My muted by the host. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Mustafa Amir. Thank you, Shukran Asam, for the introduction. Uh, inshallah, I will walk you through a very brief uh, introduction to well integrity management, why it's important, the value that well integrity brings to the oil and gas business when it picked up and why do we need it? Uh, 
share my screen and yes. Can you see the screen, please? Yes, totally agree. Clear. Yes. Yes. Yes, we'll start with uh, with a question. If you have a, a very nice new car, would you take it to an official garage or a local workshop? Usually people will take it to the official garage because the official garage will have a system in which they record the performance of each item in the car. They will make you confident that your car is running safely. They will record the names of people who worked in your car. They will benchmark the performance of the parts of your engine, of your gearbox, the most critical equipment to the car. They will benchmark it according to their observations globally uh, within their uh, experience. But if you take it to a local workshop, the guys there will do a great job, but most probably they will not give you a documented evidence of what really happened in the car. If someone change in the workshop and you go again, maybe they don't recognize you, they don't recognize what they have done in the car. So there is, there is no trackability. They will do a good job at once, but there will be no trackability. And this is why well integrity management systems are, are useful. It tells you what happened on wells, who have done it, why it was done, what was the actions that needed to be taken based on what evidence, and what is the health status of wells on the company along the life of the company and along the life cycle of wells? Would it add value to the business to track well integrity failures? Yes. If we look at this chart that shows the number of rigs that are operating in the USA, it gives you an indication of the activities in the industry with oil price. Um, when I plotted oil price with this chart, it's, it's very coloratable, but we look at the number of rigs only, the total number of rigs in black, and we have the number of rigs working in the oil in red, the number of rigs working in gas fields in blue. Uh, the shaded areas, the areas that represent a time when the oil price crashed because of COVID and because of the crisis in 2014, the price wars in 2014. If you look at these charts, you will find that the number of, of, of activity going on in the oil and gas industry drops when the industry goes into crisis. As a result, the industry shift focus from developing new fields to developing brown fields and existing fields that, that have some closed in wells, that have very known uh, reservoir characteristics and reservoir uncertainties. And that forced companies to go to revisit old wells revisit already existing producing wells to increase production through them. Since then, since what happened in 2014 and the shift towards brown fields from developing green fields, new fields to developing brown fields, well integrity started to gain traction. That the importance of having recorded well history, the importance of having technical reviews in wells, the performance of having health check on wells facilitated Re-intervention facilitated going to visit these wells again and intervene and increase production, whether through perforations, changing of completions. That made the life easy. So why, why wells fail? Usually wells fail for many reasons, for failure in design. You design uh, the wrong well. You should be designing a well with the Super 13 chrome completions, uh, but you design it with carbon steel. Aging, with time, wells suffer wear, erosion, corrosion, and this makes wells not able to hold pressures and not able to maintain controlled flow of hydrocarbons and fluids. Material selection, wrong material selection, like the, uh, for example, if you have, uh, if you have a uh, tubing, carbon steel tubing, and you have a section that's super 13 chrome, usually you will have corrosion between them. Uh, equipment rating, you use the wrong rating for the equipment. For example, the shot and pressure of the well is 10,000 10, PSI, and you put a 5K Christmas tree, it will fail. Uh, you have abrasive fluids, you have operating conditions that the well is not designed for. The well is not designed for fracking or the well is not designed to um, 
to have high, high change in temperatures and so on. Do the specific wells fail or all wells fail? Here, a study by David Zretcher in 2014, he investigated many fields in Florida, in the US, in Canada, in Norway, in, in Bahrain, uh, in Netherlands, in Pennsylvania, in uh, Marcella Shale in, uh, in the US, uh, and, and so on. He investigated these studies and recorded the number of wells investigated. You see here, for example, here Marcella Shale in Pennsylvania in the US, the wells drilled since 2008 to 2011, 3,533 wells were studied in his study. What he ended up with is that all types of wells fail. Like uh, this field here, Santa Fe, Santa Fe Spring Oil Field, discovered in 1990, 1921 in California. It suffered over 70% of failures at the time of the study. And this field is conventional reservoir onshore. And conventional reservoirs offshore, also they, they, they suffered failures, 40%, 38%, here 25%. Unconventional reservoirs as well, they failed. They failed. They suffered well integrity failures. So failure in well integrity is not just subject to specific types of wells, to wells onshore or offshore or conventional wells or unconventional wells. No, it's something general for well. And which element failed the most? In, uh, in a study by Wegman et al. in 2011, he studied 406 wells in Norway, and it showed that 75, 75 failures in 406 wells, 75 wells failed. And he found out that the majority of failures are related to failure in the tubing itself, failure in the conductor, then annular safety valve fail, casing failure, wellhead, and failures related to failure in the cementing and, and so on. But the majority of failures are related to the tubing. In, uh, in another study by Davis in 2014, he wanted to investigate the impact of aging on wells. So he studied the failures in the Norwegian continental shelf uh, in 2008, 2009, and 2010, and found that, that when the number of wells was 1,677, was 402 fa wells failed. And what, as the number, as the number of wells increase, the number of failures as well increase. Failures increase with time. And he, and he found something interesting. He found that uh, producing wells, wells that produce oil and gas, they fail at the rate of X, while injector wells, they fail at the rate of 2X to 3X. So um, failures of wells in the oil and gas industry is not just related to oil and gas producing wells, but also injector wells, they suffer from failures. So what is well integrity after all of this? What is well integrity? Why, what, when we say this well is, the integrity status is poor, this well have well integrity failure, what does it mean? Well integrity is the application of technical and operational and organizational solutions to reduce risk, of uncontrolled release of formation fluids through the life cycle of the well. When we have any uncontrolled flow of fluids in a well, then this well suffers from well integrity failure. This is according to Nozick D10. The goal of well integrity is reducing risk to as low as reasonably practical, a large, but which risk? The risk of having any uncontrolled flow of flow from a well. Which fluids? All fluids. Fluids, uh, oil, if the well is producing oil and uh, we see uh, a gas formation that's not supposed to produce, and we see this gas formation is producing behind the casing, then this well is suffering an integrity problem. If the well is a water injector and we inject an formation while another formation is producing, then this well suffers from well integrity problem. Any uncontrolled flow of fluids in the well from between the formations in the well or from the producing formation to the surface, or from uh, the injection, uh, for example, if even an injector well, we inject in formation X, but water goes to formation Y, then this will suffer as well integrity problem. 
when do wells fail? Do they fail always at the late field life when the well after like 15, 20 years, or sometimes they fail early or they may fail in, uh, in midlife? Actually, wells fail along the entire life. Some wells fail early on due to poor design. The wells are not designed to sustain, for example, hydraulic fracks, to, 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 to have hydraulic fracks through them. And you go and you perform a frac operation and you harm the tubing and you harm the packer, then the well suffers integrity, integrity issue. Maybe you do this frack early on after completing the well and you lose the integrity of the well. Some other wells, they, they, they fail with wear. You are producing abrasive fluids. When these sands pass through the subsurface safety valve, the subsurface safety valve is not holding pressure anymore, but these fluids can make, uh, can make, um, can make cracks in the tubing and, uh, and uh, they can wear the Christmas tree, uh, Christmas tree valves and, and so on. So wells don't fail uh, in a specific uh, life, uh, life stage of the well. No, they, they might fail along the entire life of well. And this gives well integrity a special case in the oil and gas industry, because it needs to be involved early on in designing wells, and it needs to be involved involved during the monitoring and operating wells under special conditions as well. This is failure of, of tube, uh, failure in the tubing because of design. The, the tubing is corroded completely. Maybe the, the well has high, uh, high, uh, high CO2 and H2S partial pressures, and it was completed with uh, carbon steel, uh, carbon steel tubing. So the tubing was completely corroded. It's failure due to wrong, wrong selection of material and poor design. Also, equipment wear, wear for uh, in the uh, in the subsurface safety valve when you uh, when you intervene with wild line, maybe wild line could cause a damage to the subsurface safety valve, or because of fluid erosion. Er High high fluid velocities with uh, erosive with erosive material like abrasive sands, they can cause damage to the steel. Okay, uh, well integrity intervene. Uh, we we now identified what does it mean well integrity, and uh, why it's needed in the business. But what is the market size for well integrity? Uh, for example, if if we want to study the um, like like what you hear in the media now, the EVs, people always ask before the technology, before how uh, how you do an EV, what is uh, the range for the cars and these uh, and these specs. People ask for the market size to know if it's an opportunity, if it's growing, if it's a growing market, so it has a lot of uh, potential, and they should invest in understanding this market and building expertise or it's it's decaying, so it's not worth the the effort. Uh, to understand the market of well integrity, we will run through these two charts. The chart on the uh, left hand side it shows the number of wells drilled in the U.S. from 2000 to 2020. On average, the U.S. drills from 5,000 to 6,000 wells annually. Uh, the chart on the right-hand side, it shows the number of wells drilled in the UK, Australia, Netherlands, Brazil. So you see always there is accumulated accumulation of the number of wells. So the number of wells grows. And when the number of wells grows, the market expands. But abandoned wells, they, they go out of the market. So they go out of the production market, reservoir surveillance market, and, um, and the operation market itself. But these wells, when they accumulate, even in the abandoned phase, they should be monitored. They should be assured that they are not producing any, any fluids to the environment and should be under well integrity monitoring. A study by Reuters uh, published in an article in 2020 shows that Canada has 300,000 wells abandoned, closed wells. The US has 3.2 million wells. That's according to 2020, 2020 numbers. And how many wells abandoned globally? 
around 29 million wells abandoned globally. So this gives you an indication of the huge, huge market in which well integrity that takes care of wells from design to abandonment and even after abandonment to monitor the wells and make sure the wells are safe. The market is growing and is huge. Now, what is the value that well integrity brings to the business? The business in, in, in a business aspect, why well integrity is useful apart from knowing and monitoring the performance of equipment, monitoring the status of wells, what well integrity is bringing to the business. First, well integrity helps in making sure that people and assets are safe. Some wells, they operate in areas close to um, residential, uh, residential compounds, uh, close to facilities, close to major roads. So any failure in these wells, any uncontrolled flow from these wells to the surface can cause a potential blowout, can cause a fire. Fire can, can go on uh, in this area and, and, and it can cause, uh, can cause fatalities to people, to, to assets. So well integrity makes sure that the wells that are in critical locations, they are safe to operate and safe to exist where they are and people can perform their activities around them without, without a problem. Again, well integrity helps in ensuring the, the wells are not producing any uncontrolled, not having any uncontrolled flow of fluids. Wells when they are closed in, they are not having methane leakages around them. While they are producing, they don't have methane leakages to the atmosphere. And now methane is becoming, is becoming big and becoming a, a pinpoint that uh, environmentalists and governments are pointing to the industry with, that the industry should reduce its methane emissions. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you got. I'm sure you guys heard about the methane pledge and uh, the global methane initiative that the industry is uh, is after, and the goals from governments to reduce methane emissions by 30 percent by 2030, and all of these goals. And here uh, we see that uh, consultants like uh, McKinsey and Company they estimate that this the upstream sector of the business. The sector responsible for exploration and production is responsible for around 80% of methane emissions. And we, if we have good integrity on wells, good monitor on wells, on how we operate them, how we test them, this can reduce methane emissions. So well integrity help the industry increase its environmental credentials. So first, the value to the business, it ensures safety. Second, it increased the environmental credentials of the industry by reducing methane emissions. Uh, yes, in this chart uh, here, we estimate the uh, methane emitted from the closed-in wells. Uh, in the US around annually, the closed-in wells emit 0.2 million tons of methane. And globally, the 29 million wells are estimated to emit 2.5 million tons of methane per year. That's equivalent to carbon emissions coming from 15 or 16 coal fired power plants annually. So, well integrity increase the environmental credentials of the industry and help the industry in its decarbonization. Uh, and it protects the reputation of the company. Uh, as we all know, the um, the, the movie Deepwater Horizons that discuss uh, uh, that discuss the issue that happened with uh, BP in uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, the president of the U.S. himself he visited the site, and as we see in the Economist, they have this um, they have this this title Obama versus BP. BP lost its reputation as a reliable company operating in the, in uh, in U.S. Uh, in U.S. Uh, license. In addition, the company was forced to pay a huge amount of money to, uh, to, to fix the damage it caused to the environment, and that caused the company to sell some assets and so on. So a well, a single integrity failure, one single integrity failure 
cause the big company like BP closed if 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 the um, some some lawyers estimate that if 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 BP was treated seriously in uh, in the trials that was raised against them, the company could have been bankrupt. Last, well integrity helps uh, the industry to increase its contribution in the energy transition by offering reliable pathways for carbon capture. If you want to, um, if you want to capture the carbon from the atmosphere or from power plants or from a cement plant or an industrial industrial cluster like what's going on in the UK, you capture the carbon and then through uh, pipelines you transfer it to wells and these well and through these wells you inject the captured carbon to the subsurface formations and you will not be able to do so unless you have assured well integrity of the wells through which you inject the carbon because if the integrity is not assured then you can't make sure that you are injecting in the formation that you are targeting like like if we look here they they are targeting they are targeting to store the carbon in in this uh, in this aquifer but if the integrity of the well is not assured if the well already is leaking the well we can have the carbon coming here and maybe this formation is sand and then the carbon goes out again. So the well integrity, there is no there is no carbon capture without strong and solid and assured well integrity of the wells through which you inject the carbon, the capital carbon. Well integrity in a wider context. Well integrity gathers technical, operational and management skills to operate the wells and make sure that the wells are safe. Well integrity operate under a well integrity policy. The well integrity policy is a is a governing document that help that that shows the commitment of the of the operating company to make sure that the wells are safe and to comply with regulations. Like for example, in some locations, the um, the government has uh, the requirement that any flowing well, any naturally flowing well should have a subsurface safety valve. And the policy of all operators, the well integrity policy of all operators in this, um, in this location should comply with the regulations and should, um, and should make sure that all wells that are naturally flowing are equipped with operable, verified and tested subsurface safety valve. In addition, the company should have a well integrity strategy to which the company highlights its its goals uh, from the well integrity. Like for example, the company wants to limit the high risk wells to 0.5% annually. And the company is aiming to reduce um, um, having wells that, uh, that, are, that need bleeding and need uh, close uh, annual pressure monitoring to 2% annually uh, and so on. So well integrity takes into the regulation of the country that the operating unit is operating in, puts it in a well integrity policy. The well integrity policy governs the well integrity management and makes sure that the policy and the requirements are communicated in the organization to achieve a well integrity strategy of maintaining wells at risk to as minimum as possible. Well integrity mirrors operations, technical engineering, and management. In technical engineering, well integrity takes into account the well design because you, you will need at some point to calculate the mass and well design help you in doing so. You will need to take reservoir considerations to make sure that the materials selected for the wells are the materials that will help the wells uh, operate on the corrosive environment without, uh, without failure take well intervention history, cement evaluation, equipment wear, and well location. In the uh, operational side, you will, you, will, you will be governed by the well integrity policy, well integrity strategy, the barriers, if you have barriers in place, safe, tested or not, and well operating limits. And for the management, a well integrity engineer or well integrity focal points, well integrity management engineer, would need to make sure the people have uh, roles and responsibilities that are communicated and they are 
uh, operable within the system and the organization, have risk managed, have corrective actions going on in the company and the company perform its corrective actions and preventive actions are maintained according to the schedule designed, verification testing happens and uh, according to uh, standards and pressures are managed and no pressure is kept in the annulus unmanaged. If you go to the item related to risk assessment consideration for well integrity, it takes into account very wide specifications on the wells, like location. A well that's closed to people's camp is uh, is a well that, uh, that's, that, 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 that should be treated with more care than wells that are further than away further away from people is it close are, uh, are wells close to each other or not can we um, are the wells close to facilities or pipelines these wells you treat them differently for example in um, in one study we wanted to check the possibility of eliminating subsurface safety valve uh, not eliminating not fixing subsurface safety valves when they fail in um, in liquid loaded gas wells liquid loaded gas wells they operate one day you operate them on and then the second day you operate them on unloading manual unloading and you keep doing the cycle on and off for the wells one day produce one day they don't produce because the tubing size is is big and um, liquid loads the the fluid velocity is not able to to hold all the liquid with it to the surface and liquid keep dropping out and kill the well. One of the considerations we took in the industry, proximity of well to the camp, facility, people, and major pipelines, because we concluded that there is, if this is, if this is our well, we concluded that there is an area of 80 meters around the well. If the Christmas tree is knocked out and the well is producing its full potential to the atmosphere, we will have the safe distance at 80 meter from the well. So wells that have um, that have a pipeline passing by in a circle with 100 meter major pipeline, or they have a major road or close to the facility within 80 meters, they were prohibited to operate under this under this philosophy, and they should always have a subsurface safety valve, even if the wells are running on intermittent cycle of production and manual unloading. The outflow potential and flow type. Outflow potential is not, is not the production rate. Outflow potential is the production rate that the well will, uh, will deliver if the, Christmas, if the worst case scenario happens. The worst case scenario, usually you don't have a Christmas tree. So the well is operating without a Christmas tree to the atmosphere. So you calculate, uh, you calculate in your Prosper pipe sim that the well is, uh, is operating against 14.7 PSI and you get this production rate and then you call it the absolute open flow or the outflow potential of the well. Uh, in addition to that, you take into account the duration, uh, the reservoir pressure, the temperature, the fluid composition, if the fluid is uh, sour or corrosive. Um, one of the considerations as well we took in the, in the study where we um, assist uh, the subsurface safety valve, fixing subsurface safety valves when they fail in liquid loaded gas wells was the H2S content. If the wells have high H2S content, we know that the operators uh, are not, um, are not trained to deal with high H2S uh, wells. And that was one of the barriers to uh, apply the study on, on some on, on, on few wells in the company. Out of 400 wells, just few wells, we couldn't apply the study on them because of high H2S content in specific wells. Uh, the third element you look at when you do a risk assessment is redundant system. Does these wells have, um, have uh, ex ha have redundant system that you can rely on them to uh, operate the wells. Do they have actuated valves? Do they have emergency uh, emergency shutdown system or not? 
So wells that have emergency shutdown systems, they are usually you 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 can you can treat them with uh, with less uh, with, with less uh, with less risk than wells that don't have uh, emergency shutdown systems on them. So from from after all of this, we we would come to a conclusion of like, do, does it really worth to spend all of this money and have a system and have all of these complicated workflows and take all of these assessments and put it in organization level and people level, and in managing assets? Actually, yes. From um, from Hagar and. And so they, they, they stated in the study that the cost of leaving an improperly abandoned well is not higher than doing it right from the first time. And it applies also to a failed well. If you have a well that's, that's, uh, that suffer from well integrity failure and you keep it on and then you get a blowout, the cost of doing the right thing when you get to know about the failure is always much cheaper than the cost of going through a, a blowout with all the potential negatives uh, on the company reputation, on people, on assets that we discussed before. Now, what, what, functions, uh, what functions intervene in well integrity management? In well integrity management, we have the production technologist, production engineer, and we have the well operations, and we have production operations. These three, they define, they establish, they safeguard well integrity. A production technologist defines the well function specification and operating envelopes. They, de they define the mass, they define the, 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 completion, uh, the completion style of the well, they define the, um, the, the, the well head. Uh, the wellhead rating, the equipment rating, uh, they define the material for the well, they define the um, uh, maximum shot and pressure for the well, and, and so on. These technical specifications, they govern run, running the well later on. And then production technologists, they work with well operations to establish well integrity. Well operations take the proposals and the requirements of the production technologists, and they build the wells build the wells with the, um, with the trajectories required, with the designs required according to standards. So production technologists, they define what does it mean an integrity for the well, and then well operations, they establish the integrity, and then production operations, they safeguard the integrity. They make sure that the wells running safely along their operation phase and even after abandonment by providing the monitoring and uh, managing the uh, the wells in case of deviations. So, for example, the production operation guys they provide the annulus pressure monitoring. They the they according to the uh, company policy, monthly or biweekly, they collect the annulus pressures and then they put it in the system and the system compared to the MASP and then you can define if you have MASP excursions or not, if you have pressures, uh, annulus pressure monitoring case or not. In addition to that, if you have a well that's running on the, on the deviation, so for example, a well that has failure in the Christmas tree, failure in the subsurface safety valve and tubing to annulus communication and has pressure in the annulus, so a special case that has complicated failures, you can define a program until the rigs go, until the rig moves to the location, you can define a program with the uh, production operations to uh, take care of this deviated well. A well with such a case should be treated uh, urgently, but maybe for a rig move or a business need, the rig is not on location. The production operations will take care of this well, will monitor the uh, pressures more frequently. They, they can go and uh, check, for example, H2S content or have a methane monitor and check if it's leaking methane or something like this to uh, to make sure that the deviated well is under control. So well integrity is not just for uh, well operations while, while building the well, it's not just for production technologists while defining the technical specifications, it's for all the, the, the major three disciplines in the oil and gas industry to is define, establish, and safeguard integrity. 
What is a well integrity management system in terms of inputs and outputs? In terms of input first, a well integrity management system takes in the well design, the well design from which you will define the mass, you will define the, uh, the major producing formation, you will define the barriers, and you define um, many things in the well. And then it comes the uh, production data the well head pressure, the annulus, annulus pressures. You need to keep them in the system to um, monitor if the well head pressure equals the annulus pressure. For example, you will have an annulus communication and there are many diagnoses related to recording well head pressure and annulus pressures. And then you will have the completion data, the rating, the packer rating, the tubing uh, rating, the tubing equipment rating and so on. Uh, it will have the preventive maintenance schedule. Preventive maintenance schedule is like the, the health check that you do on wells. The health check you do on wells, uh, you go check uh, the Christmas tree, the, well, uh, the wellhead and the Christmas tree, uh, for example, every six months. And you go check the subsurface integrity of the well every, for example, four years. And then you analyze the data that comes from the reports and you keep it in the system and you study it. That goes to the maintenance results where you investigate if the wells are safe after the health checks you made or not. The system should have rules and responsibilities for actors, well integrity actors. And then you have the facility status reporting where you report wells that have high risks and need special care, need deviations, and then uh, a well failure model. I think we are approaching the time, and that's why we didn't investigate them deeply. And the output of the system, the output of the system is it defines risk and action plan. It defines wells that are that are having high risk. It measures the percentage of wells that have high risk to the uh, number of wells. So they may, you, you have a health check understanding of wells and it provides the action plans for wells that needs to be fixed. We are approaching the end of the hour, but I wanna show you a slide quickly. Yes. So well integrity management process in practice, it is the data acquisition, the data we showed before, then you put it into a context, and then you have a logic analysis. You use it to come up with the urgency and acting. You do annulus pressure monitoring, wellhead integrity test, subsurface integrity test, and then you put that into the context of risk assessment considerations, the technical data of the well, the events that happened on the well, the failure history. You gather all of this, and you go to your governing well failure models that define that define the risk for single and multiple failures. And then you come up with a signed color code and action plan. I think uh, we approach the end and we can go for questions. Really, thank you so much, Engineer Mustafa, for this amazing webinar. Uh, actually, very detailed and instructions on the well integrity management system. Uh, so guys, be before we go to the Q&A part, I would like to share uh, the feedback form link. I will be sending it in the chat box now. So please take a moment to fill in this uh, form. Uh, this will help us improve in the upcoming webinars. Okay, guys. Uh, anyone who has any comment want to comment on the on any point? Uh, sorry if I was uh, running too fast because I was watching the the clock. They told me it's an hour, and uh, it's open open for discussion if you want. So we we have uh, now one question. Uh, someone's asking what no, are even the... even if someone wants to interact, would you allow that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay, I think, I think okay. It's, it's even better. Okay, if no one wants. 
Okay. So, so guys, everyone, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask or comment on the uh, webinar, so you can unmute yourself now. I, I have uh, removed this prevention. Okay, if nobody wants to talk, you can. Yeah, okay, so I can, I, can go through the, uh, I can go through the questions that we have right now. So, and also if someone would like to unmute himself, it's okay. So, so the first question is, what are the latest regulations uh, or standards related to integrity? Uh, also, how do the impact operations and companies? Uh, latest regulations. No, re regulations depend on the company where you operate. Like, for example, if we operate in Egypt, uh, the, the government doesn't have any regulation. It depends on the company where you operate. Uh, England, uh, they may not uh, They may not have it. If you fail, they go have an investigation and then they, they make their analysis of the case. Uh, the U.S., they have it with the, uh, the U.S. Uh, EPA. Uh, Environmental Protection Agency and, and Norway. Keeping up with all the regulations globally, I think it's not it's not it's not an easy task. I'm, I'm not not an expert in regulations in countries where I did work. And Another comment from Sadakati is he. I think he's asking about uh, what who is responsible for well integrity. He's asking is a well integrity consultant should be a drilling engineer, production or reservoir engineer. Which one is best fit to be a strong uh, well integrity consultant? Uh, usually, the well integrity focal point. They call this person who operate the system uh, the well integrity focal point. The well integrity focal point usually a production technologist, production technology engineer, production technology engineer. He by his job definition, he always interacts with drilling engineers in the construction phase of wells. He interacts with workover engineers when they have any intervention in any well. And they interact with the production operations on a daily basis. Using their, uh, their nature of job, they are usually assigned as the well integrity focal point and by their technical job description, they are the ones that define the mask for the wells that they operate. They, they review the mask, they, they define the completion of the workovers, and they define the uh, technical requirements of the well itself, the purpose of the well itself. So usually production technologist is the ones that are responsible for coordinating the well integrity management system. However, drilling uh, or um, you can call it well intervention uh, engineers, they are the ones responsible for taking the actions, taking the, even after drilling the wells and establishing integrity, they are the ones that take the action to check the Christmas tree, to make the wellhead integrity test, to make the subsurface integrity test. And the production operations are the ones that make sure that the wells are safeguarded, the requirements around operating the wells are in place, and the data around the wells are gathered and so on. Yes. Uh, so L Lester is asking, uh, what what certain time uh, in the life cycle of a well uh, that uh, well integrity management starts and ends? No, well integrity management, OK. Um, so I, I give you an example. Uh, there was a case where we had several wells failing uh, several injector wells, they suffer tubing to annulus communication. And uh, the case the case repeated with even new wells. And then what happened is that the, this 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 trend and failures was 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 captured by the asset engineer and by the well integrity engineer. And then we went to the asset meeting, asset review, and uh, we made an intervention that the design of the uh, of the tubing for these injector wells should change, should change from carbon steel to GRE coated uh, coated tubing, and that made the well integrity to intervene in the well design itself, intervene by providing by by evidence, intervene in well design itself. So well integrity can go on from the de design phase of the wells 
and then while monitoring the wells, while monitoring the wells after each each uh, preventive maintenance you do, you 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 go and uh, check the Christmas tree. If there is a failure, then the well integrity engineer raises the failure to the asset teams and to the organization, and then they react on it. And then when the wells are abandoned, the abandoned wells, uh, the closed in wells, even they are as long as they are with the company, the company goes to check them, perform the Christmas. Uh, the Christmas tree health check. If if it's closed and well, if it's not abandoned, they go check the Christmas tree. They make Christmas tree health health check, well integrity test, and they report it to the well integrity uh, engineer through the system. And if there is a failure, they they might decide to uh, intervene in the well and make the well safe. So uh, the well integrity takes into uh, takes into consideration the life cycle of the well. The purpose of the well integrity management system is, is, is not to do a specific, a specific action. It, the purpose of it is to make sure that the wells are safe, are not, are not producing or injecting informations or fluids that they shouldn't do. The wells are not having any uncontrolled flow and the equipment on the wells are functional and tested and verified. When we need them, they are there in place regardless of the well definition. The well definition itself, it goes into the well failure model later, but unfortunately we, we couldn't go uh, through the well failure model. So, so. Yes, we can take two more questions. So uh, first one, uh, someone was asking what type of reservoir, brown feed reservoirs or green reservoirs can uh, we do carbon capture on? Uh, is it for enhanced air recovery purpose, or this can happen on any reservoir? No, carbon capture is is is, is another topic. Um, actually, it depends. It depends. Some companies they uh, they they produce um, high CO high high CO two uh, natural gas, and then they they capture it after processing, and then they inject it in uh, an oil formation to for enhanced oil recovery purposes. But uh, the one that we were referring to, it's the carbon capture for environmental purposes. Like for example, in the US, they want to capture uh, carbon from the air, direct air capturing, and then inject it in, um, in subsurface reservoirs and depleted reservoirs. In the UK, they want, to, um, they want to capture carbon from industrial clusters, capture uh, carbon from industrial crustals that run on oil and gas and coal and then inject it in uh, depleted reservoirs in the North Sea. So it, it depends. I also believe that uh, out, out of the, the candidates for uh, uh, carbon capture and utilization wells uh, that we select is the, is the wells that have the best uh, well integrity management. Yes, there is a, there is a branch in well integrity for uh, for carbon injection because uh, carbon is uh, is very corrosive and when you inject it under a pressure, what happens to the to the material of the well? It's uh, it's a big question. How these materials are going to degrade? Are going to degrade constantly? They degrade to a specific period uh, to uh, the, they make a specific loss of material and then it stops. It's uh, it's, it's a big question and also some. Um, uh, some new topics are coming in the industry for using depleted reservoirs for hydrogen storage and the interaction between hydrogen under pressure with well materials is at high temperature is still not fully understood. Yeah. Uh, so guys, uh, you have sent again the link for the feedback form. And Junior Mustafa, thank you so much for this brutal uh, conversation and for your time uh, on uh, giving this uh, interesting webinar. Shukran, shukran. Thank you so much for attending. And uh, please, if you need uh, anything, you can uh, re reach out to me and you are welcome anytime. Thank you guys also, for attendance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, guys, asking about uh, the, the slides of this presentation, I will check with Engineer Mustafa on the availability of having uh, like a PDF copy for this. And if, if it's available, we will share on the uh, LinkedIn uh, page. Uh, so don't worry about it. Also, you have the live streaming uh, of this.
not only by YouTube, but you can revisit it at any time for, for getting any additional information you want. Thank you all and see you all in the next uh, webinars.